Hi everyone, I appreciate your support. Thank you guys for your comments. Um, even just leaving a heart comment, it really it really helps because I'm trying to get back in the algorithm like you guys know. So anyway, let's get into it. So this is a continuation of that last reading that I did where I was getting something about a, it's like a king of swords type pretty much. And that person just kind of sabotaged your connection. They didn't trust the love offer that you were presenting to them because they got, they were supposed to go and, and, you know, meditate and get in and do some healing work. But instead they just started thinking about the past and things that they've been through. And they just, it's somebody who's very pessimistic. They just sabotage the connection with you. They made, maybe made incorrect assumptions, um, but you were patient with this person and they didn't really consider your mental health. They only, or your emotions, they just kind of considered themselves. It was just all about their traumas, their fears, their abandonment issues, their insecurities. They didn't consider that, you know, you probably have the same traumas and fears and abandonment issues and you know, they didn't understand how hard it might have been for you to be vulnerable and be open and emotional with them. And now it's like you're to that point where you're not reciprocating. You're not, you're not, um, you're, well, you're not putting yourself out there anymore. You're not reciprocating, uh, you know, for anybody that's, that's, I guess not reciprocating is the wrong, is the wrong term to use. You're not opening yourself up to anybody who's not open with you. You're only going to reciprocate. You're only going to be vulnerable with people that are vulnerable with you. You're going to match people's energy now, basically. So let's get more about this storyline. The Chariot. The King of Cups. The Seven of Pentacles. The Page of Swords. The Star. The Six of Cups, Seven of Wands, Knight of Cups, Knight of Pentacles. The Fool, the Queen of Swords, the Sun, Three of Swords, Eight of Swords. I really feel like this person from your past just sabotaged things to no end. Like they just did not. And that's the thing. I think that anybody who disregards your mental health like that is going to be blocked and they're going to be forced to come correctly or not at all. They're not going to. I almost feel like this person is being kind of blocked from your energy to a degree. Um, I mean, you have a strong telepathic bond here, so they can still feel your energy and you can feel theirs. But I think they're also being being blocked to some degree, um, you know, due to not taking your mental health seriously, due to not, you know, caring about your mental health or your emotions, I guess I should say as well. It's, you know, like I was saying, it's like they, they only thought about themselves. It was all about their traumas, their fears, their abandonment issues. All of the weight of this connection was on you. It was all, it was just, you know, all about them. It's like you gave them that safe space to rest, but they didn't really give you a safe space. It's like you were probably really there for this person through their darker times and like they weren't there for you when you were going through the, those dark times, when you were going, when, you know, when this Queen of Swords, you know, used to be a Queen of Cups and when she was going through hard times, when she was going through, you know, depression or anxiety or whatever else, it, it's like that, you know, he wasn't really there for her. He wasn't really supportive of her. He wasn't you know, he didn't give her that same gentle, loving, supportive energy that she was giving him, basically. And that turned this Queen of Cups into a Queen of Swords, among other things. 
Um, I mean, that was one of the many things that I think turned her into this Queen of Swords. Because it's like your spirit guides, you know, we've been, getting, we've been getting that message for, you know, recently, like your spirit guides are being more protective of you now. Like they're not, because this person might have really done a number on you, like mentally, emotionally, like you, like God knows how many times you probably cried over this person, probably a lot more than they even realize. Like this probably messed you, you know, three of swords, ten, eight of swords, like this probably messed you up quite a bit more than they even realized. Um... And like I said, it, it, it's like they're, they're, your, your ancestors, your spirit guides are not going to allow this person in unless they're, they're, they're going to feel what it feels like to be cut off from your energy, basically. And they're not going to be allowed back in until they have that empathy, until, you know, they're willing to be vulnerable to match your energy, until they have that compassion, that understanding, until they you know, take your mental health seriously, just as, as, you know, protect, you know, someone that loves you is going to protect your heart the same way they would protect their own. And I think this person did like the opposite of that. They almost kind of used you as like a punching bag. It's like, they just, all their, their frustrations from their exes, from their past, everything was just projected onto you. You know, you almost got, you got the short end of the stick. You got blamed for things that you might not have even done. Um, Yeah, let's see here. So this person isn't going to be allowed back in if they're just, again, just considering themselves, just all about their traumas, their fears. They're going to have to consider your traumas, your fears, your, you know, your anxiety or issues that you're dealing with, your abandonment issues, your, you know, your pain, things that you've felt. They're not going to be able to just... It's like this, this is somebody that like says that they, they don't ever want to hurt anybody, but they, they don't think twice about hurting people. They don't think twice as long as they feel safe, as long as they feel like they're protected, like as long as they, as long as they feel like they're not getting their heart broken, they're okay with like hurting other people. You know what I mean? And I'm not, I'm not saying this person is like a bad person necessarily. I mean, they could be for some, but, but I'm just getting that energy where it's like, they don't really think about it unless it's happening to them. And this person doesn't, you know what I mean? Like this person will sabotage and push you away when you need them the most. They'll push you away when you need love, when you need support. They'll be guarded. They'll, they'll be cold. They'll be distant when you need physical affection. They'll be they'll be distant. They'll they'll um, you know, like they, they weren't really meeting your needs is what I'm getting here, basically, especially from that last reading that we did. Because I think this Queen of Swords is at this point where it's like she wants people in her life that are going to be there for her when she's depressed, when she's got anxiety. She doesn't want to just, I feel like she used to be a Queen of Cups and now she's more of a Queen of Swords where she doesn't want to just give and give and give. She wants, you know, she doesn't want to be there for people who are not going to also be there for her. Like she, you know, people, I just, I just get this energy where it's like, I know I don't even know if the, is the Queen of Cups even out here because I'm seeing it, but I don't know if it's out here. But I'm getting like that transition from like Queen of Cups, Queen of Swords, where she's not as emotionally open as she used to be. She's more careful with her energy, and like I said, your spirit guides are also protecting you too. It's not just you, but your spirit guides are also maybe your ancestors. You might have one ancestor ancestor in particular that's like not happy about this situation that you've been in with this person. But I just get that energy of like you know, this, this kind of like this wall a little bit where you're like, you're not letting anybody in unless they want to love you through the good times and the bad times. Like you want people that are, are going to be there for you when you're going through it. People that are going to love you consistently. And like I said, I feel like this King of, this uh, King of Swords that we channeled in the last reading, not only do I feel like he didn't really make any effort to be there for you through that um or to love you through that i think he mostly just wanted it's it's almost like he was drawn to you when you were in your light when you were in your power like almost like a resource like that he could get something from but he didn't really love you when you were at your low points you know depressed upset uh, anxious whatever you might have been going through it's like he didn't really love the good and the bad he just loved certain aspects of you 
So he's he's not really being allowed to come back in unless he's going to love you correctly and love you just as you are, the way that you loved him, you know, fully and unconditionally. Um, so I feel like not only did he disregard your mental health, but he might have also even caused some of the mental health issues or emotional issues. <sighs> Because it just it just feels like with that King of Swords reading that I did that I just did, that's you know this is a continuation of it. It just feels like there was like this energy of like sabotage, where it was like you were being vulnerable, you were being patient, and it's like they just kept sabotaging, and sabotaging and sabotaging. You know, the more vulnerable you were, the more that you tried with this person, the more they would push you away. The more that they would sabotage. Like the harder you tried, the more they would push you away. And I think that's partially why you just gave up and you're just this queen of swords now where you're like, no, I'm not, mm -mm, not doing that with you anymore. Not, not chasing anybody, not doing that anymore. The right people are going to come to her and she knows that. Whether it's this man or somebody else, she knows just in general with friends, with lovers, with whoever, she knows that the right people are going to be there for her in her dark times, that they're going to make an effort for her, that they're, they're going to, um, you know, that they're going to be there for her, basically. Because when this King of Swords sabotaged, I don't think he realized, like, some of the things that you went through due to that. And I don't think, you might have been going through other things as well in your life that were just really hard, really painful. Like, you might have been going through a dark time. So to, like, have the person that you consider your safe space, like, your, you know, like you wanted that person to be your safe space. And I think at some point she realized that they were like the opposite of a safe space for her that, you know, she, she really wanted to be vulnerable and gentle and open with that person. And then at some point she realized that they were actually the one causing her harm. They were actually hurting her. They were actually, it's like, she almost needed a safe space from them. Whereas before it's like, she was hoping that she saw them as her safe space, but then she realized that, you know, this this King of Swords was never there for her at her low points. He was never consistent. He only wanted her when she was in a certain energy, but he rejected her when she was in, you know, energies that he didn't like. He pushed, you know, he pushed it away. Um, and even with like the, you know, the Queen of Cups, it's like he, you know, because I, I, in that reading we were getting, it was like, I, I just felt like this consistent energy of like this woman being vulnerable. And then he like kind of sabotages, pushes it away. And I think that built up a lot because like I said, I think that, you know, that woman was male or female, could be a man too. But I think that person might have been, you know, going through some dark times. And so to not have the person you love be there for you, for you through that, but to also like push you away and be cold and play games with you while you're going through that. I feel like that's made this person kind of bitter and kind of guarded and kind of in this, you know, queen of swords energy where she doesn't, she doesn't trust people or she doesn't trust him at least anymore. But in those moments, of course, he only thought about himself. He only thought about how he was feeling. Like he might have had, like this is this King of Swords is like the type where he might get in his head and like give himself an anxiety attack or or like get, you know, get triggered by certain things and get scared. And then he just commits to that. Like he commits, like he he takes those fears to be a reality, basically. And then he just sabotages based on that, based on his assumptions, based on, you know, paranoia, whatever it might have been. Um, and again, he only thought about him in those moments. He only thinks about himself. He's, he only thinks about, you know, his assumptions, his feelings. It's, you know, whatever she was going through. I, cause I almost feel like this queen of swords might've even been going through some stuff that he didn't even know about, or there might've been like low points in her, in her life where it's like, I, I just see this man like getting in his head and like distancing himself or pushing her away. And it might've been at like the worst times. Like it might've been at like the times when she was like, dealing with like depression or when she was going through something or when she was feeling alone, it, it's like, not only was he not there for her, but he like made it so much worse. You know what I mean? Like she didn't need to like feel rejected, like at a time like that, you know what I mean? It's like, and, and some of the depression might've, you know, I'm just, let me see here. Let me pause so I can channel it clear, clearly. Like I almost get, I almost get this energy of like, sorry, my phone. I almost get this energy of like, maybe, um, like maybe when she was at like a low point or she was like more vulnerable, it's, it's almost like, like this man affected her at her lowest points, like at her most vulnerable is when he really got deep in there and pretty much broke her heart. So, 
So, I mean, his complete disregard for her mental health, for her emotions, just only thinking about himself, not being there for, for her when, you know, multiple things. There's so many things. But this is why these spirit guides are kind of blocking this from coming in. They're not letting him come in unless he's coming in as a king of cups. And he's going to have some convincing to do because this woman is now in a queen of swords energy where she doesn't really trust him anymore. Like he pushed her away when she needed him most. Um, and it's probably one of those simple things where it's like he could have just come over and like cuddled with her and just brought chocolate over and like she would have been happy. Like she would have, I don't think she was even asking for much, but she was made to feel like the little things that she was asking for were some kind of burden. It's kind of the energy that I feel here. Um, yeah, I just, I just keep hitting that just all about themselves, all about their own fears and anxieties. And it's like with their like abandonment issues, like maybe they, you know, they might've gotten triggered and, and afraid of, of, you know, being left behind. So it's like, they would do that to you. And like, then they triggered your abandonment issues too. And it's like, they didn't consider that you had those same fears. They didn't consider that you were making the same risk. You were making the same investment in them that you were, um, like they just didn't think about any of those things. They just thought about their own fears. They prioritized their own emotions. They prioritized everything over you. And that's why you're this queen of swords now. So yeah, and like I said, this goes for multiple people too. This isn't just about them. Just in general, the people that only wanna love you when you're at your best, when you're happy, when they can get something from you, those people are being blocked from your life. Like they're not gonna be allowed to come back in. You might have falling outs with friends even. Those people are not going to be allowed back into your life um, unless they love you the same. And you're basically going to finally get the same love that you give out, that you've been giving out. Because I feel like there's some divine justice here where you were a queen of cups for a long time before you finally became this queen of swords type. You know, or you might be like, maybe it might not be permanent, but you're in a, you're in a queen of swords state. You're thinking about things differently now. You're seeing things differently now. Um... And, and so there's this kind of wall around you now where it's like the universe is bringing in new people, new friends that are going to be there for you. People that are going to like, you know, hold you when you're at your low states. People that are going to to talk to you, to check on you, to ask how you're doing. People that are going to, you know, reciprocate that energy, that loyalty, that support that you've given so many other people. It, it's coming back to you now. You know what I mean? So like, and, and not all of you have friends that are like that, that are, you know, that are guarded like that. But if you do is basically what I'm getting is that that's, um, those people are, are going to be blocked from your life unless they come correctly. And new people are also going to be brought in that are going to be, you know, be a, a better support system for you. And it's not saying the past people are bad or that they're even, they might not even be emotionally unavailable. They might be completely emotionally available, but it just might be people that just didn't fully understand you or they didn't fully um maybe you were you maybe you're a little bit more intense than most or maybe like your mental illness maybe if you're going through something like that or some anxiety like maybe they weren't used to to maybe they're maybe it's just something they're unfamiliar with so they weren't equipped to to know how to be there for you but but again either way you're you're still being guided to people that are whether it's them or, or new people or both you're, you know, the divine is only going to allow people in that are, are going to um, be there for you and be supportive. Anyway, um, sorry, there's just a lot of information coming through. But anyway, I, I feel like I feel like the tables have turned here, honestly, because I feel let's see, how do we have this? We had it like, okay. I, I want to say too, so in that last reading, remember I was getting that like he kept sabotaging again and again and again, the more she would try, the more he would sabotage. I think it was also because he had the option to sabotage. He probably didn't really want to sabotage this relationship, but he had the option to because he thought that she would always be the queen of cups. He thought she would always be there for him. He thought that she would keep trying. He thought that, you know, he thought that he thought that they would continue on that cycle that, that, you know, and I think that's, you know, that's part of what made her just give up where she was like, no, I'm not doing that anymore. I think she also started looking at him differently because of that, because she's like, no, I want, like, she wants support. She wants loyalty. She wants that energy that she's given out. You know, she wants that back, whether it's from him or somebody else. She's, she's not doing that anymore with him. Um, 
But yeah, it's, it's like he had the option to sabotage. That's the, that's the thing. That's the key. That's what keeps coming up. Is like he knew he could sabotage. He knew he he felt or he felt like he could at least. He felt like he could get away with it. And I almost feel like how do I explain this energy I'm getting? I think he might have misunderstood things too, and he might have thought that she liked being in that role but I don't think he understands that she was really turned off by having to be in that role and she's not willing to ever be in that role again with him um I, it almost feels like maybe he thought that she liked being in the masculine role or like she liked being the chaser or she liked going after the unattainable um I think she just I don't think she likes that energy at all I don't think this queen of swords queen of cups cups type I don't think she liked that I think that she made an exception with him because she truly loved him but I think if he were anyone else, she would have just told him off for doing that. You know, she made an exception, but I, I can guarantee you she was probably turned off the whole time. She probably stopped seeing him as a real man because he was not taking on a masculine role. He was taking on the role of somebody that's, you know, needs to be babied or needs to be pursued. You know, she she doesn't like being the pursuer. She, she was probably very turned off by that. But I feel like there might have been some miscommunication for some reason where he might have felt like, like... Like, he didn't understand. He didn't... And it kind of goes hand in hand with that reading that we were getting, you know, the first part of this reading, where he just assumes the worst about people and he assumes certain things about people. So I don't think he could fathom that maybe this this woman was being patient with him because she really deeply loved him and just wanted to be with him. Like, I don't think he could fathom that maybe it was that simple. I think in his head, it's it's almost like he sees relationships as some kind of game so I think that he thought like oh wow like you know the more I pull away the more she she tries to be vulnerable and, and empathetic with me like he he thought that he didn't understand that he thought it was just her wanting what she couldn't have where it's 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 not the case at all. She was I think she was I think this woman was very turned off by that energy. I think that having to chase him over time is is what made her kind of just lose interest and now she's kind of on the fence where it's like she's she's not she only wants this if he comes correctly. If he comes as somebody that's emotionally available and open and, and he's the pursuer, she'll she'll probably be open, but only if he comes that way. Um yeah, like I said, she made an exception for him. She was turned off by that energy, but she, you know, she wanted to give this a try. I think she might have given it one final try too, which might have actually confused him where she, he might have pulled away more and she might have given it one, like when he really pulled away, she might have given it one final try where she just like poured her heart out or she was really emotionally open. And in his mind, he's like, oh yeah, see, like when I pull away, she tries harder but the reality is that she was really turned off and probably on the verge of giving up. So she probably poured her heart out because she was like, I'm about to be done with this. So might as well lay my cards out on the table and, you know, see if he reciprocates. Like when she's trying the hardest, she's, you know, it, it's not necessarily a good sign. It might just be that she's to that point where she has no patience left and she's like, well, I'll give it one last try and that's it, you know. Um <sighs> But, but yeah, I, I feel like, I feel like that was a huge mistake he made is, is not realizing how much that emotionally unavailable energy was turning her off, you know, how much she did not like being in a masculine role. Because he, he, it's almost like they had two different perspe perspectives on what was going on, like, like, you know, she, she was, she was getting turned off. She was chasing, she might've been chasing or trying with him, but she was, the more she had to chase him, the more she had to try with him, the less she saw him as a real man, the less she saw him as a protector, the less she saw him as a provider type, the, the, the more turned off she got. And the more she, you know, considered, you know, maybe this, you know, I'm, I'm not, maybe I'm not doing this anymore. Maybe I'm sick of this the whole time. He's thinking that she's actually turned on by having to chase him. So you know, they they were definitely miscommunication. They were on two very different pages, or I guess I should say two very different perspectives with that. Um, you know, the whole time he thinks that he has her even more because she's trying harder. Meanwhile, she's like more turned off than ever by having to be in the masculine role in the connection. 
Um, anyway, what I'm seeing here, though, with the Chariot and the King of Cups, I feel like... I feel like he's... Let me see. Let me see where my phone's at. Sorry. Okay. I feel like the tables have turned... I feel like he's not sabotaging anymore because he doesn't have the option to sabotage anymore. Like I was saying, he will, he he thought that he could get away with that. This man, this is the kind of man that will get away with whatever you let them get away with. That's the issue with this man. It's hard to trust somebody like that. She's the queen of swords and he's aware of it now, which is why he's being the king of cups. Because he knows that she's not the queen. She's not the queen of cups anymore. She's not pursuing anymore she's she's guarding herself she's protecting herself she doesn't trust this man anymore yeah the chariot the king of cups now he's the now it's like the tables have turned now because it almost feels like a like i hate to say it like this because i know it's probably offensive if you're this king of cups but sorry but it's, it's almost like it's almost like a little boy honestly it's almost like that you know like those little boys that you know like you see like a little boy at the mall who will like peek out in the corner and see if his mom's still there. And then he, he pulls back and he kind of giggles and he peeks out again to see if his mom's still there. But if she walks away, he panics and he chases her. And it's, it's almost like that little energy where it's like, if she freaks out, he just keeps playing those little games and keeps hiding. But when she's like, you know, whatever, I'm done, you can catch up or not. That's when the little boy panics and chases her. It's kind of like that, honestly. Like this queen of swords is to this point where like, no, I don't, I'm not... I'm not giving you the benefit of the doubt anymore. Um, you are whatever you show me. Whatever energy you present, I'm going to assume that's how you feel. You're not talking to me. I'm going to assume you don't love me and I'm going to move on. You are talking to me. You are being emotionally available. I'm going to assume that, you know, and it, it, it took, I'm going to assume that you want this if you're emotionally available. Like she's, she's going to, she's going to go with whatever he shows her. She is not going to be in the masculine energy ever again. She's not going to take on that role for him ever again. And it probably took her a lot. Like, God, this masculine probably doesn't even know the pain, the, the absolute despair that she went through to become this Queen of Swords. He probably only knows a little bit of what he put her through, but he probably doesn't know everything that went through her head before she got to this point of being the Queen of Swords. But anyway, the Chariot of the, and the King of Cups, it's like he's coming forward now because, he, you know, like I said, he doesn't have the option to sabotage anymore. She's, she's not... If he sabotages it, he loses her for good. Um... And he knows that with the Page of Swords, the star. <sighs> yeah, now he's wanting to heal this. He's he's feeling nostalgic. He's wanting to heal this. Seven of Wands, but she is guarded. She doesn't trust it unless he comes correct. But he is wanting this new start. With the Queen of Swords and the Sun and the and these cards, though, it's it's almost like she's like the truth was revealed. The heartbreak. She's the one that's feeling guarded. She's the one that's feeling distrusting about this now. It's almost like he has to convince her now where in the in the past she was trying to convince him to give this connection a chance. She was trying to show him that this is true love, to take a leap of faith. And now it's like she's the one that's guarded and damaged and afraid and, you know, focused on this heartbreak and, and kind of in this eight of swords mentality of like, you know, just just very cautious. And he's, you know, if he wants this, he's going to have to be the one to, to convince her. Yeah, the magician, the world, yeah. He's going to have to be the one to convince her that this is worth it. The Tower, the High Priestess. Lots of major arcana cards here, too. Yeah, because she's going to be alone if she's if it's not reciprocated. She'll be alone before she'll go back to another situation like that that's one-sided. Yeah, there's only it's only going to work if there's a transformation here. Yeah, justice, divine protection. This person's only being allowed back in if, if, again, if they're emotionally available, if they're willing to make the effort, if they're going to build something with you, if they're going to take accountability and, um, you know, show you an effort, show you that they love you, show that show you that they want to work on themselves. Um, yeah, there has to be some transformation here. But I think they're aware of this. I think that... I think this person is wanting to convince you to give this another chance. At least that's the energy I'm getting. Because I think they also have this awareness that they're, they might lose you forever and they might. They don't want to look back. It, it's almost like this was like a potential life partner, but they're kind of recognizing that if they don't get it together, it might be one of those situations where it's like 
they're going to look back and regret it their whole lives that they didn't try, that they didn't make an effort for you. And they know that they are afraid of having that regret the rest of their life. And so I think that's what's going to make them come forward. Anyway, I hope this resonates with you guys. I'm going to go ahead and put this out there.